Hello and welcome everybody to our today's webinar, Cat Opening 101 and Making Penetration Holes in Revit. My name is Alexandras Sheja, I'm an MEP engineer working here in AGI CAD. We create applications for Autodesk Revit based on the needs of the world's uh, leading BIM practitioners. Our main task is to eliminate tasks that do not create value for our users. We've developed a very wide range of true BIM software in the world of Revit professionals, covering uh, wood framing, metal framing, precast uh, concrete design, and also MEP system design. Uh, but today I'm specifically talking about the cut opening tool. The goals to cover in this webinar is to show what is possible to do with the cut opening, uh, how to generate the openings themselves, how to control them in the project, what parameters are available in opening families and what users could do with those, and also how to tag openings. And at the end of the webinar, the goal is to have architectural project where openings in the walls and floors for various MEP elements from linked MEP file uh, with user predefined offsets. Also tagging all the openings uh, according uh, with the information about their size, shape, elevation, demonstration of what's possible to extract from our opening models. And I'll jump to my models. Today I have two models opened. One is, let's see, this one is architectural model uh, with linked MEP model inside. And the same model but reversed is MEP model with linked architectural model is itself. I will begin everything in my MEP model because Quite often, the MEP engineers are the ones who have to create all the openings and define the rules. So everything begins with our Tools for BIM doc. For those who, of you who haven't installed it yet, uh, after in, I'll show how to do that at the end of the webinar. After you install it, it will show on your uh, toolbar under the Tools for BIM. And by clicking on Show Doc, it will show just as one more panel like uh, Properties or Project Browser. And with this tool, you can easily download, activate trials or activate tools themselves. Also with it comes uh, some free tools. It's very easy to use. All the tools are shown here. Under My Tools, you will see what tools do you have and also uh, with the rod, red dot will be marked all the tools which have uh, active released updates for them. And it just shows that you can click on this button for updates and update your tools. And like I said, today we will talk about the cut opening. It opens like this. Together with cut opening comes uh, one additional complementary tool, sort mark. We will not talk about it today. But cut opening has all the comments in this section, but I like and recommend all the people to add it to the toolbar by clicking on this button. You will see that under the Tools for Revit Create Modify tab will appear the cut opening tool itself. It seems a bit easier to use it through here. Plus, I can also close the Tools for BIM doc and work, have a little bigger workspace. So what is important with cut opening? Uh, how does it work? It takes all the interferences in the project, uh, applies user predefined rules to those interferences, and later generates openings. So, of course, the main part would be to create configurations of how those openings should be created. This can be done in, by clicking on Opening Configurations. Uh, well, I also can mention it will not be shown today, but our tool as well can uh, transfer openings from architectural model to structural model for doors and windows. Uh, and as well, it can place uh, fire damper elements on ducts where they intersect specific walls. Uh, those uh, filterings are also available for the users. But today we'll look at just openings. And by clicking opening configurations, 
we will get the most important window for our settings. Uh, it's possible to save multiple different configurations with different opening sizes, uh, as well as it's possible to save those files uh, not only on, in just one folder, but maybe somewhere in the server for all the company to use, or with a, every specific project, save specific rules. And how do the rules look like? Uh, they are created for all the different elements are described, like rectangular round dots, oval dots, uh, the main pipe systems, that would be fire protection, plumbing, sanitary, hydronic, other. Also, openings are possible for cable trays, conduits, and for beams, that's more for structural engineers. And we will look at rectangular openings right now, uh, how they are created. Uh, in our tool, you can choose to which size of MEP element, what kind of cut offset will be applied, and what shape of opening can be created. So in cut offsets tab, user can predefine from which to which size, what kind of opening should be created, rectangular or round, what kind of offset will be created. And if you have rectangular opening, maybe you need some additional top cut offset or bottom cut offset. And these will be applied to all the rectangular ducts in the project. Uh, also, it's possible to write down different offsets for ducts with different installations if you have them in your project. If in this case, uh, cut offsets will be applied directly from the size of the duct. So if the duct is, let's say, round and it has 20 millimeter diameter, so cut offset 20 from both sides, opening will be 20 plus 20 plus 20, so it's 60 millimeters. Uh, if we choose apply defined size opening, then in the bracket of, let's say, from 0 to 150 millimeters, opening will be always created the same for all the elements, as long as they fit in this category. So there are two possibilities. And if for round elements, it would be easy to guess that from 0 to 150, that would be a diameter. For rectangular objects, uh, users can choose what this dimension should mean. Uh, would it be width of the element, height of the element, or both? If we choose both, so as soon as one of the sizes reaches 150, we will jump to the next setting, 150 to 200, and the opening will have 30 millimeter cut offset. As well, in our tool, we can set, do we want openings to automatically join or not? That will de depend on the distance between MEP elements. If you will put tick here under join, how to join, and write down intersection offset, so if MEP elements are closer than 50 millimeters one from another, all the openings for them will be out of joint into one bigger rectangular opening. And last but not least, uh, the interference check. Uh, this is additional setting. Uh, it allows you to create opening uh, to control if you want to create openings where MEP element completely intersects wall or not completely. So if you want to create opening only if MEP element goes completely through the wall, not just touches it, then you can put a tick here, full interference is required, and only then opening will be created. If you don't require full interference, then even if MEP element touches the wall or floor or roof, the opening will be created. And the top part, as you've probably noticed, is the same for all the tabs here. Here you can choose what mark will be written to the openings created for specific systems. So for rectangular ducts, it's just D. For round ducts, it would be, let's say, RD or round duct. As well as uh, our tool will calculate the height of the element. And it's possible to calculate that height from a level to which that opening will belong from level above, so usually it's with minus value, from project zero level or shared zero level. And to where we would want to measure that height, would it be bottom, center, or top of the element? And that's mostly it from the settings. As soon as you create settings, you can save them to your folder, click OK, and we have the main configurations. All what we need now is to have the file which will have all the interferences. Uh, to get it, we use a native Revit function in Collaborate, interference check. 
and we can run interference check between current project and let's say linked architectural model. So we can do walls and floors and pipes, ducts, and cable trace, trace what is available in this project. Also, I forgot to mention, all the openings will be created only for the line-based elements. So it's straight elements of pipes, cable trace, ducts, conduits, and beams. Clicking on OK to save that interference check. Exporting it as HTML file. Make a model, that's OK. Close. And what we can do now is apply the rules which we've created to this interference check file and create one combined file. The purpose of what that one combined file is its availability. MEP engineers can use it to insert openings as well as they can send already that file to the architect and he will not need to describe any rules for the openings. He will be just able to click on insert openings, use specific file, and all the openings will be inserted how the engineer prescribed. So in read interference check data, that's what we'll do. We'll combine our rules with the maybe model with the interference check file. And as you see, I've chosen MEP configurations, which I just saved. And I know that they're created pretty well, so no mistakes are shown. But just to show what will happen if we choose default configurations, all the interferences are analyzed, and our tool will tell you if something is missing or something is rejected. So in this case, in default configurations, their openings are not described for elements with insulation, rectangular duct with insulation in this case and tool will automatically suggest to R add some default values. Also, it will show that in this default configurations, uh, some intersections are rejected because if you remember that full interference required, in this case, full interference was required and elements were just touching the wall, so nothing will be created in this case. But I will go back to my configurations and click next to apply all of that and we'll get a table with uh, the result. Uh, here on the left we can configure how we will see all the elements in the table so it's possible to add different parameters and configure by them. Right now it's set by the levels so it goes level one, level two and level three and we have all the interferences. For example here it's a wall and duct interference and here we will see what cut offsets will be applied in this case. So if we want to make changes even before inserting the openings for very specific elements, it's possible to do here. Let's say change cut offset from 20 to 40 for this specific case. And only for one duct, opening will be created 40 millimeters. And basically that's what this table is used for. And from this table, we can export the XML file, which I like I said before, uh, can be sent to architect, to structural engineer, for them to insert the openings, which were right now created by MEP engineer. And to begin with, I'll insert those openings in MEP model, and later we'll jump to architectural model. How it is done, it's already clicking on insert modify openings, click on insert openings and choosing that file which we just created, openings. It will open up the same table and here we will have a little bit more control, it will have more usage. So now here comes, oh well, here division is already not just by levels but already by floors. Uh, walls on the type, host type, and then by levels. And we can sort out, maybe we don't want to insert openings in all the project at once, but just want to go level by level. That we can do by clicking on level one, and everything will be filtered for walls level one, and only these openings will be inserted. As well as it's possible to uh, filter by the, any of the other parameters, maybe we want to create openings just for ducts, choosing ducts, right click, and filter by selected data. 
That means only openings on level 1 for ducts will be created. I will remove quickly all the filters and click on level 1 again. Uh, also here in this window we already can choose what kind of uh, opening we would want to insert. As you know, here architect show model is linked, so it's impossible to create real void openings in the walls. All what we can do is create solid placeholders. So here we can choose what we want to create, a void opening or solid opening. Void openings would be, of course, inserted in architectural or structural model, as well as we provide two openings with the sleeves, combined with the sleeves. So choosing to insert solid openings for all walls on the first level. And we have 162 elements with combined with walls, so it's 81 opening will be created. And that's what we'll have now, and tool will automatically try to join all the openings which match criteria described in our configurations. It'll just take some time. Does it work with linked IFC files? Yes, it does. So after I've created openings, we have already two type, uh, two tabs here, created openings and create new openings. So under created, it's all level one openings. I will close this tab. And well, since I've chosen all the elements there in the table, they are chosen in the project too. And we can see that all around them were created solid elements. Those would be opening provisions, since it's impossible to cut real geometry right here. And we have in all the project where uh, element, MEP elements were very close to each other. Of course, they were combined to one bigger opening, for example, for these two pipes, and for MEP elements. Also, we, here we have in this panel control over join and join. So in this case, openings were joined. We can click on join and join, and they will become two separate openings. Uh, very easy control. Also, we could join this one and this one. If we choose them together, click on join, they'll be joined. Uh, what will happen if MEP elements are changed? You don't need to do any interference as long as no new MEP elements were added. But let's say this one will change size to 200 and 200. Let's say one of the pipes changes uh, diameter to mm, 50. That's a lot, but maybe it will be more interesting. And one duct gets moved to some other direction. All that we need to do in this case is click on Openings Revision. It will open the same panel which we just had, and will show all the changes which were made. It will track those changes and suggest how we can modify the openings. So I'm clicking on that. It's analyzing our project, and it will open the table. And our panel is opened back again, and we can see that there is changed position. I will minimize this one. If I choose it, it shows that this opening changed should change position. There is also dimension change. We will not be able to see that it's chosen because it's hidden by the duct right now. And unjoin will show these two openings. And join will proceed to do two things. It will at first unjoin these openings, increase the opening for the pipe, and then join them back again. So it has three functions in one. And all that we need to do is to choose all the table here, click on agree with last changes, and as you see, the openings were unjoined and joined back again with a new increased size. Also for change position, it'll just move the opening. And for this one, clicking on agree with last changes, it will increase the size of the opening. And well, that would be it from the MAP model. I will quickly save it to show that the same changes are possible in architectural model. Save. And I'll go back to my architectural model, level 
one. And like I mentioned before, I'll just uh, quickly add my kid opening tool so it would be visible. We've already created XML file with openings as an engineer, and all architect needs to do is to insert those openings. That can be done with our tool if our architect will rate later need to modify openings, or it can be inserted simply with cut opening free tool, which we provide for free. And then architect will just not be able to modify openings easily, but insertion is possible. So clicking on insert openings, choosing the same XML file, we'll get the same table, except now we'll choose to insert void openings. Well, maybe in the same wall on level one. So we have the same thing. I'll close this panel. And we have right now an architectural model all the same results, except now openings are uh, created as voids in the project. And what will happen if architect has all these openings and he will have reload MEP model. As you remember, I've just saved MEP model, so reloading MEP model. As long as uh, all the IDs of elements are the same, we can do the same opening revision. Well, I saved uh, with structural uh, solid models of openings. We will have all the same changes possible. We will have changes and it will move and recreate the openings as they are needed. Well, and since I've loaded the MPI uh, model with the structural openings, I'll just quickly go back and to not have them. It'll be easier to do like this. I just wanted to show that sizes can change and it's all easily adjustable in the architectural model. And now, time is running up. I'll quickly go to the top view to show what parameters are available in openings and how to tag them. So the most important parameters for us inserted by our tool is an identity data. And if you remember the opening mark, which we will write down, uh, so it's cable tray, uh, opening shape, opening elevation, and the host, the system name and type will be shown for uh, five, five induct openings, uh, system by whom it was inserted, uh, configurations used, uh, date, and also some collaboration parameters. So it's approved, declined. Uh, once openings are created and sent to the architect, he can insert them in his project and for some openings choose approved or declined, do opening revision, and export one more XML file, send it back to the MEP engineer, he will load openings, load openings again, and see which of those were declined and which were accepted. So after I choose all my openings, I can export created, and I'll have one more XML file with additional data about openings. And to tag them, uh, since they are generic models, you would need just to create tags, which we do generic models. And with our tool comes a shared parameter file. And all these parameters are shared. So it's possible to load them to the tag. So that's exactly what it shows. It's a wall opening, the size of the opening, 140 on 140, width and height, the elevation, opening elevation from uh, from the level, and shape of the opening, rectangle. Same would be for all the other openings. Let's say cable tray and maybe one for pipes. Just need to place it correctly. 
you know, pipes. Kind of we would import here to this tag uh, the open mark. We will see as well for which exactly element the opening was created. So that's what we have right now. Architectural model with all the openings up to date and possibility to tag them all. Uh, also with the possibility to explore them, uh, collaborate between architect, uh, structural engineer, and AP engineer, and full control of the openings through opening revision tab. You can change sizes there. It's possible to change sizes in the project already when openings are inserted. That's all will be under user's control. So yeah, that would be from cut opening tool. I'm waiting for some of your questions if you have any. And meanwhile, I'll just quickly show uh, how to get our tools for BIM doc. It's possible to download from our website, agcat.com. Here you can read about all of our products. Here you'll find all the information, uh, specifications, how to download, uh, how to use uh, our latest news. And at the bottom, if you'll scroll a little bit lower, there is a free trial. So clicking on Tools for BIM Doc will open the Tools for BIM Doc page. Uh, here you can see the introduction video, how to install and how to use our doc, as well as with written instructions all the getting started information as PDFs, also available to download. And to download the Tools for BIM doc itself, just going to Download tab and choosing here for which Revit you would want to install. Uh, the doc is completely free, and it also comes with the three free complementary tools. So that would be cut opening free. Let me see. Cut opening free, smart select, and smart browser free. And you can get two uh, trials of all the other tools uh, for free as well, full functionality for 14 days. And you can ask us to provide you with a demo of the tool, make a video call, and uh, discuss all your needs and how we could help you with our tools. Thank you everybody for joining. I hope you'll have a good day. Stay safe and healthy and goodbye. AGA GAD, building BIM together.